Greetings. I am dragging. I am hungover, but I'm still going to do this YouTube video. Not really. <laughs> Though the full moon um, from last night does have me quite, um, not drained, um, but tired. I, I must admit, I'm tired. But I'm here anyway because I promise you one video per week. And it could possibly increase just depending on the vibration and what's going on. But for, to, for right now, let us stick to the one video a week. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashaki Ali, and this is Divine Soul with Ashaki, the channel in which I provide insight, practical wisdoms, anecdotes, and so on and so forth to help you grow along your spiritual journey. <clears throat> In this video, first of all, and I'm having some tech difficulties, let me adjust this camera. Okay. So first of all, I wanted to just say, if you are a return subscriber, I thank you so much for supporting the cause. You know, I do a lot of um, work on Instagram, Facebook, WordPress, I'm, I'm some of everywhere. Um, and if I'm touching one person, then I'm doing my job, but it is my intention to, for my messages to be reached to more people. So if you will, make sure that you are sharing the video, that you're liking the video, that you're hitting the bell. And if you are a new subscriber, welcome to the Divine Soul family, because at the end of the day, we are family. Now, in the last video, I talked about how to tap into ancestral wisdom to improve your life. And in this video, I want to talk about how to navigate in the world as someone that's following a more spiritual path, but still you got to deal with everyday stuff, everyday shit, really. Um, and it can be quite challenging, quite challenging, but be not dismayed. Don't give up because at the end of the day, whether you are actively pursuing a more spiritual lifestyle or not, you still are living a spiritual lifestyle, in my opinion, because you are a spirit first. We are a spirit that is wearing a physical, we are in a physical manifestation of ourselves at this particular time. So whether you are cognizant of it or not, it doesn't matter because you're still living a spiritual life because you are a spirit. You have a spirit. Um, however, dealing with issues in this life, um, challenges, relationships, family, all these things can be quite challenging, but it can be done successfully. You can still be joyful, but it may require you to make a lot of changes along the way and just come into a level of acceptance. So number one, first of all, make sure that you are accepting of yourself. You accepting of whichever path or paths. Um, I know people that call themselves freestyle spiritualists. There are people that you know follow an African traditional religion. Some people follow more a nature based um, spiritual system. You know, there's uh, various things, various paths in this world. Literally, um, there are as many paths almost as there are of people. It really is. You know, I feel that your specific spiritual journey should be individualized, tailor-made, and adjusted for who you are, your life, and what is going to serve you. Because at the end of the day, if it's not serving your highest and best good, if it's not helping you to evolve into your highest version of yourself, then it's really um, it's really a waste of time. So what is working for me may, may not work for you and so on and so forth. There's no, I don't feel it's one more fit all. And when you get into that ideal um, that you have to be, it has to be done a specific way unless we're following a particular path, like say we're following voodoo or we're following Ifa or we're, you know, these things that have a set um, you know, set things about them and ways of doing, um, then you get into trouble, you get in doggers, you get into like religious boxes. And we don't want to do that ever. I don't believe that that is um, any kind of way for anyone to grow if you're stuck in, inside of a box. So anyhow, it should be individual, but you have to come into a level of acceptance um, for yourself in order for you to be your um, highest and best self. Understand that every day won't be easy. It won't be roses and peaches and you will be um, possibly ostracized for your decisions in pursuing a more physical, I mean, a more spiritual lifestyle in whatever form that comes. But continue anyway. That's one. Tip number two, 
coming to a level accept of acceptance that other people may not be accepting of your lifestyle. Um, it's unfortunate. I have a lot of family. I come from a family that, um, and not just one line of my family. So let me, let me go there. My father was a pastor. I've said that before. Then my mater, my mother's father, his father was a pastor. And then his father, who was, so that's my great grandfather on my maternal father's side. Great grandfather was a pastor. His father was a pastor and his father was a pastor. So, and then in that particular line, my grandfather has many siblings that are either evangelists, pastors, bishops, the whole gamut, right? On my father's side, besides him being a pastor, there are ministers, evangelists, all Christian based. Um, on my maternal grandfather's side, there are also Muslims. On my maternal grandmother's side, there are also Muslims, very, very few spiritualists. Um, there are some root workers. There are some um, Ajay and, and people that practice hoodoo uh, from South Carolina. Very few. The vast majority of my family, probably somewhere between 80 to 90%, are Christian or will identify as Christian if you ask them what their, their path is. Now, with that being said, when the conversations come up, oh, what church you and the children go to? Because you know I have six children. Six that are, I mean, five that are still in my household that are um, youth. Now that I have one adult son. That is always, I try not to discuss religion or politics or the state of black people with anybody. I just, unless it's someone I know and I know, not to say we gotta be thinking the exact same, but I'm not gonna debate with you about what is best for myself and my household. I'm not gonna do it. Um, I've come into a level of acceptance that everybody is not gonna be good with what I, the way I live my life. That's fine. These altars and things that I practice, the magic that I practice, the the spells that I perform, the mantras that I chant, all of these things that I do, the potions that I make. And, you know, I'm launching this Botanica coming up very soon next month. It has, It's none of their business. And either they with it or they're not. I'm not going to be heartbroken if they, you know, talk negatively about me. My grandfather, my father is deceased. Um, my grandfather is very much living and he knows that I live a very alternative lifestyle and he's good with that. And at the end of the day, I'm good with that. And my ancestors, including my father, have let me know such in dreams and in other forms that they're good with me pursuing and living my life the way that I live. So I'm not, you know, looking or seeking for any acceptance. So once you get into that, then you'll be more at ease. So just don't worry about it. Everybody's not going to cheer you on. They're not, they're just not going to do it. So that's two. Three, understand that just because you are now living a so-called spiritual lifestyle and you're meditating every day and you're chanting mantras and you're lighting candles and you're connecting with the ancestors and you're listening to your spirit guides and all these, you know, you know the guys and goddesses that are working on your behalf and you tapped into the angelic realms and all these beautiful things does not mean that you won't be confronted with day-to-day -day issues or challenges. There's going to undoubtedly be jerk-offs on your job. There's going to be a neighbor that's not so kind. You're going to deal with traffic and all these things. But I will say this, what has been my experience. Since I have tapped into certain um, knowledge, since I have connected with my ancestors, since I have been studying and connecting with my goddess mother, Yamaya, and my uh, Father Shango and different, you know, and speaking with my spirit guides and making sure that I'm open to um, them working with me and providing me messages. Those things that used to cause me such heavy distress is not on that level anymore. Um, I've been able to navigate um, certain situations in a more graceful manner. Tapping into my intuition has allowed me to, you know, um, to make clearer decisions, better decisions for my life. Um, 
it has improved my life living this way in a way that I can never express. I've been able to manifest things into my life um, on a more higher level. I'm still working on my manifestation techniques because there are other things that I desire for my life and for the lives of those that are connected. And I have no doubt that it's going to happen. It's already happening right now. I just hadn't experienced it yet. So, you know, you will see improvements um, in your life. They are literally working on your behalf. Um, connecting with them. They are waiting to hear from you. They do love you. They do, you know, your ancestors love you dearly. Um, don't get it twisted. They do want to help you. So, you know, it has brought me a level of peace and joy that I can't ever express. I'm forever grateful for stumbling upon because, um, truth be told, and I think I've shared this before, I stumbled into, um, I've always been into occult things. But never would share it because of who I am and my family and all the, you know, whatever. But I was um, an activist, have been an activist for many years. And I was studying one thing and stumbled into the truth of Abrahamic religions, <laughs> studying something totally unrelated to religion. And it transformed my life from that day. After I got over the initial shock and hurt and pain. My life was transformed from that day when I accepted the truth as it was presented to me. Okay, so that was three tips. Tip number four um, in regards to things to expect or, or whatever will have you from living this you know, spiritual lifestyle. You will be presented with challenges as you grow. Um, you can't move up a level. It's almost like playing a video game. You know how, if you you know, the the levels become harder and harder and harder. You're going to be presented with certain challenges to see. Oh, are you that involved? Okay, let's, let's, let's put it to the test. The universe, your higher self, your spirit guides, whatever you, what have you. To enable for you to evolve, you got to go through the fire, baby. You can't skip it. It doesn't work that way. And so you will um, be presented certain challenges. Uh, one thing that I've been challenged with is my relationships with others, including um, romantic relationships have been super challenging. Um, I've decided that, you know what, I'm going to just take a break from that. I just can't. Um, because for one, the level of insight that I have now, I try my best not to read. But unfortunately, spirit won't just allow me to play the fool, no. So when someone tells me something, if it's, they're not being 100% truthful, I'm gonna know it. If they do it, you know, it's gonna come to me and of course I'm always gonna follow my intuition. If it's something that says, oh no, this is not a good situation, this is not a good person, you need to distance yourself, you need to pull back a bit, I'm gonna do that because I know that my higher self is not gonna guide me the wrong way and I have, literally um i've gotten to a level that i totally know when ego is talking to me when my intuition is speaking to me i can discern i have a level of discernment i know exactly what's going on here otherwise i couldn't perform readings and things for people if i didn't know how to tap into my own intuition so with that being said a lot of people fall by the wayside they don't hear from me again they don't i just don't waste my time it is it's a it's not for me to do. And really and truthfully, when you start functioning on a higher level of consciousness, they won't be able to be around you anyway. It's just not gonna work. The vibra the vibration is gonna run them off. And you know, if I get to talking about spirit talking to me and doors opening and all kind of the things that go on in my household, um, they probably will run anyway. So it's going to take a special kind of man to be my man. Um, and um, on the other flip side with friendships, no, I don't try to get all woo-woo, as uh, one of my dear teachers loves to call it, woo-woo, go down the rabbit hole. But because of who I am, a lot of times those things come out of people, and I'm not even asking for the information. And then when I start speaking about certain things, one or two things happen, either there's 
totally interested, want to hear more, and then want to know more about myself and what, what my lifestyle is or what I got going on, or they are, they come with the you going to hell stuff. <laughs> So it gets really touchy, but know and understand that there is a tribe of people that exist out in this world that will align themselves with you if you continue to just stand in your own authenticity and be who you are. They'll find you. So don't even worry about those that fall by the wayside. Let them, let them, allow them. And then you know, some people are not meant to remain in our lives. They are here for um, a short period, uh, and that's it. They're not meant to continue on the journey. You need to learn to release and stop holding on to people if you do that. I'm, I've been guilty of that for a lot of my life, um, but now I don't, don't so much. The energy, you know, whatever energy that I'm receiving from the person is going to be reciprocated. That's the way I work now. I don't. I'm not going to pour into an empty situation any longer. And then lastly, how to navigate in this world when you live in a more spiritual lifestyle. Um, know that you are not alone. This, you know, these this journey can be quite isolating at times. And truth be told, you do need some time to yourself, especially if you're highly empathic and sensitive to, to energies and people and all of this. Like for myself, the other night I went to a networking event and it was a party, but I wanted to go early. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it during the time that Spirit told me to be there. So by the time that I did arrive, it was so packed and I just could not. After an hour of being in that building, the people were beautiful. The music was great, but it was so crowded. I just couldn't handle it, and I had to leave. It was just too much going on. I felt all this rush of emotions because I'm so empathic, and I was like, uh, I was over it. I had to get home. I had to bathe, you know. Um, anyway, so that was that. But you need to understand that, yes, we can't be hermits all the time. So we do need to go into social situations. But at the same time, we need to know when it's time to recharge the batteries. Sometimes you need time to yourself to re, you know, rejuvenate, restore, renew, just to be with yourself in your own space or in your own things. It's, it's required. Um, and, and as you go along, in this path, you will come to a point that you'll understand that. So, anyway, this has been a shocky with Divine Soul. And I hope that this channel has been um, helping you along this path to stay encouraged. Um, don't allow any naysayers or anything like that to get you off what you know in the pit of your stomach and your gut and your intuition is best for you. You do what is best for you. Um Make sure that you are subscribed if this is your time, you know, first time seeing me. Peace. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And if you'd like to connect with me further, take any courses, book a reading, all of my links will be down low in the description box. But until the next time, you guys take care. I love you all so much and sending you all an abundance of peace, love, light, and always balance. I'll holler at you all next week. Peace.